Hello everybody and welcome to this presentation. My name is Lee Snyder, the product manager for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I want to introduce the new straight staircase extension which is available for download on the Tecla warehouse. Once it's installed it will appear here in your applications and components catalog. And I'll just go ahead and double click to activate this command and zoom in here. And you'll begin to notice that this is quite a bit different than our current stair tools that we already have. So this one uses a combination of direct modification as well as the new straight staircase side pane which you can see there on the right hand side. You'll also notice some values here within the model that are illuminated that you can use to lay out your stair. So to begin I'll just go ahead and pick my first point which will indicate the start of my stair. And now as I hover around you can see that the next point that I pick will indicate the direction of the stair. So I'll just go ahead and do that just to put in a stair here to begin with. And then we can take a look at what's happening. So you'll notice here under the general section we have this formula type which will allow you to insert specific information that you have to control the layout of the stair. So here using the LHN formula type we've chosen to define the length of the stair, the height of the stair, and the number of steps. We also have the ability to define the angle of the stair and then the tread rise and run values as well. If you hit the drop down you can choose the option that you want to use to control this information. You can use the property pane to modify these values. So for example here if I wanted to change the length of the stair I can key in a value that's here. Or I can easily come in and just use direct modification and change this in the model. So more what you see is what you get type of environment. Like all direct modification, I can also just click and drag these handles and drag that to where I want it to be and all of the other values adjust accordingly. If I want to change the formula type to something else, I can just hit the drop down, choose the option that I want, and then I can begin modifying this information. Now you'll see here, once I change the formula type, these new values are the primary values that will control the layout of my stair. All of the other values will be calculated, but these visible values are the ones that will control the layout. So let's say we want to change the height of the stair. Let's go ahead and change this, for example, to 7 feet. And I'll zoom out a little so that we can see that. And then we can also come in and we can change my rise and my run value. So you'll see here this T value is the value from nosing to nosing in the horizontal direction. My R value is from nosing to nosing in the vertical direction. So let's go ahead and change this, for example, to be 11. And then I can set this R value to be 7, for example. We'll just go ahead and make that change. And you'll notice here this R value is a maximum value, so it will never exceed the value that's placed there. But depending upon the length and the height that you define, this value may be smaller to accommodate for that while also holding your T value. So it's doing a lot of the math in the background with the intent to make it easier for you to lay out the stair. So now that we've made those changes, let's go ahead and go back to the initial option that we were using. And you can see that this length value has changed based upon those parameters. So all of these values are being calculated using the formula type we're able to define the primary values that we want to control the stair layout. One of the other really nice things that I like about the stair is that if you want to modify things you can just simply click on it there within the model. Or if you prefer the corresponding drop downs are here on the right hand side where you can come in and control this information. But let's take a look at how this works. So if I want to modify the top landing I can come in and click on this here. And you can see that it will collapse everything except for this specific category. If I want to add a dog leg, for example, I can do that here. So let's just punch in 36 inches here. And then let's say we want to make this other one 2 feet. Then I can key in that value. And the thing that I really like about this is the dimensions stay there on screen, giving me instant model feedback, letting me know that my stair design is what I intended. If we want to control the offset value here from the tread to the top of the stair, you can put in a value here and it will just bump that up and you can visually see that dimension. Same idea down here for the bottom landing. If I come in and click on this and I want a dog leg here, for example, let's go ahead and put in some quick values here. I can do that. I can also come over here to the side pane and control the landing direction. So right now it's set to horizontal. I can change that to vertical and point these down just as you would expect. So going in order here, the next thing, if I wanted to come in and change my stringers, I can use this drop down in the side pane, or I can just simply click on the stringers here within the model, and I can see the values that I can control. 
If I want to change the rotation of my stringers, I can do that here. If I want to change how the width of my stair is calculated, I can do that here. If I want to remove my left or my right stringer, I can easily do that. I can define my profile, grade of material, part and assembly start numbers and prefixes, name of the stair, class, and finish. You'll also notice here, as that's illuminated, there's certain things that I can control using direct modification in the model. So if I want to change the width of the stair, I can just simply key in a value and make the change. Now if there are changes to my steps, I can just click on those and begin modifying that. So you can see, again, that there's things that I can change in the property pane, but also change using the direct modification in the model. So right now, for my step, I'm just using a simple contour plate. I have the ability to bring in custom components or items, which we'll look at a little bit later. I have the ability to remove the first and the last step, and then of course change the basic properties as you would expect. Now if I want to change the thickness of this contour plate, I can just click on that dimension in the model and make the change. I can change the width of my tread to be 7 inches, for example, and I can also change the length. If I want to change the nosing, I can go back to the stringer here and put in a value here to offset this tread from the stringer. And now I can see that I have that offset value. So it's a real nice what you see is what you get. Just click on whatever you want to be able to change. So one last thing that we'll take a look at are the connections. So if you want to modify the connections, you can just click on this connect text in the model or just expand this drop down here in the side pane. And then you have the option to use just basic brackets that are being pulled in here. Or you can come in and choose a connection type from the Applications and Components catalog. But I'll just go ahead and leave this as it is for the time being. So let's take a look at how we can use this in a more practical example. So here's just a simple mezzanine model that I have. And we're going to come in here and add in a switchback stair at this half landing and then run this all the way back up to the top of the mezzanine. So I've created an elevation view here that we can use. And so let's go ahead and activate this command. So from the design drawings, I know the height of the half landing is 4 foot 10 and a half, and I know what my max rise and run values should be. So let's just go ahead and use that to insert the stair. So I'll make the change here, and let's type in the 4 foot 10 and a half. And then I can set up my max rise and run values and then we can use those to insert the stair. So let's go in here and we'll just pick where our stair should start and then we just pick the direction that we want the stair to run and it will insert that for us in the model. And now we can start making modifications. So if I highlight the stair and click on the stringers then I can come in and I can adjust the profiles to be whatever I want them to be. So if I hit the drop down it will show me the list of most recently used profiles or I can click over here to launch the profile catalog. So let's just go ahead and change this to be C12 by 20.7. I can also see here that I have a top step that I don't need. So let's just go ahead and click on the steps and I can remove the top step. And while we're here, let's go ahead and change this from a contour plate to use a custom component. So what I'll do is load in a custom component that also inserts an item so that you can see how both of these options could work. So I'll just choose this item step and that will then load that profile into the model. I can then choose an attribute file here as well. And then if I spin this around, you can see that it's inserted this item shape, giving me a realistic representation of what those treads would look like. If I spin this around the other way, you can see that there are a few additional things that we need to change. So this item is a fixed length. So let's go ahead and adjust the stair width to be the same. So let's go ahead and change this to be 36 inches or 3 feet. And now I also want to remove these brackets that are here in the model if I spin those around. So I'll click on the connection option here, come over to bracket, hit the drop down, and then change those to off. And then I can see that that will update for me in the model. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at. So before we add in the landing, let's go ahead and modify these treads. So if I redraw the view here real quick, you can see that the nosing line is flush with the stringer. So let's go ahead and modify that. So I'll just go ahead and click on the stair and the stringer. And then I can modify the nosing line here. I'll just put in a value of 2 inches to pull that back. Now if I redraw, we can more clearly see that that is no longer there and I have a proper nosing line. 
So now the last thing that we can come in and do to this particular stair is add in the landing. So let's just go ahead and click on this here and I can see that I need to extend this to frame into that header channel there. So I'll just put in a value here of four feet and then that will extend this all the way over. So I'll just do the same thing over here as well and make those quick modifications in the model. So now that this stair is set up, I need to also create a stair that goes back up the other direction and I want to use a lot of these same settings. So let's just go ahead and save this away. So let's call this our Mez stair, for example. Click on save. And then I can use most of these settings to insert the stair going on up to the top of the mezzanine. So let's go over here and we'll activate the command. But let's use a different layout option here, or a different formula type. So let's put in the length, the height, and the number of treads. So here I have 8 foot 3 as my length. Let's go ahead and change my height to be 5 foot 7, which we know is the top of steel for that mezzanine from the design drawings. And as I hit enter, I can see that my R value is exceeding 7 inches. So if that exceeds the code values, then I can come in here and just simply add in one more step. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And then you can see my T and R values will recalculate. And if that's sufficient, then I can go ahead and insert this stair into the model. So let's go ahead and pick my start point here. And then I can just come over and define the direction that this needs to go. And I have the stair inserted here. So if I spin this around, we can take a closer look at some of these things that we need to adjust. So for example, up here, if I click on the landing, I can see that that Initial value is okay. This will be framing into the HSS member, but this one extends way too far past. So let's just pull that back one foot one. That way we can then frame into the header beam that's there. If I change my representation, we can see that these two now can frame into each other. So let's go ahead and look at the bottom of the stair here. So I can see that this is where the stair began. But now I need these to be at the same elevation so that I have a smooth, continuous place to walk. So I need to offset the stringers from the tread. So if I come in and click on the landing option, then I can set this value here to be 3 inches and that will offset those to line up there, as you can see on the left-hand side, flush with my first stair. And now what I can do is I can just simply pull these values over so that these dog legs are framing into that header beam as well. So I'll just go ahead and key in the values. And then visually I can make sure that everything looks okay. So now that I have that, I could then, if I want, go ahead and finish the rest of the detailing of the stair by putting in the handrail and the finishing touches at the bottom and the top so everything's framing in correctly. But this is a great way to use the new straight staircase component in a more practical example. So as mentioned, this is available for download on the Tecla Warehouse. As always, we invite you to try it out, send us any feedback that you may have, and we hope you enjoy this new development.